All right, so today we're gonna to disassemble a Lee Enfield number four. Um, there are some different variations of Lee Enfields. It'll be a little different getting the bolt out of the, uh, out of the rifle, but I'm gonna show you how to do this. Unfortunately, you do need a special tool to get it fully disassembled. Uh, this is one that I made. Brownells also sells one. Um, very simple tool, it just has two little uh, tits there on the end of that tool and it's drilled out in the center. I'll show you what that's for here in a second. The other one is a hollow ground screwdriver. So first, remove the bolt from the gun. Um, here, pull back the bolt. And there's a little gap in the receiver here. Depending on what model you have, you might actually have to pull it all the way to the back and flip it out. But for this one, this is a Savage Lend Lease. Uh, there's just a gap that you have to push that in. Bolt slides out. Next, we're gonna unscrew this bolt head. And this bolt head is actually, um, they're, they, every single one's numbered. So you see this one has a, let's see what number this one has. This one has a number one on it. Each one's numbered and that's actually how thick they are and that's how you can adjust headspace. So that is your bolt head. To, we'll remove that extractor here in a second. So now you have your bolt body, your cocking piece, your firing pin, firing pin spring. There's a screw in the back here. We're gonna unscrew that. And that just locks your cocking piece into place. Or yeah, your uh, firing pin into place from rotating. So that screws out. Now we're gonna put the bolt, the uh, Lee Enfield disassembly tool in there. And if you look in there, there's a little flange that this actually hooks into. So I'm gonna go, do I feel it? All right, there we go. Now I'm just gonna unscrew it. and your firing pin and firing pin spring slide out. As you can see with this tool, it slides over the firing pin and just locks into those two lugs there. And that's how you unscrew that. Firing pin spring pops out, got your bolt body, and you have your caulking piece. Now we'll do the extractor. Okay, for the extractor, you're gonna get a screwdriver bit that fits it. Um, I needed a thin bit here, one of the Brownells thin bits. You're just gonna unscrew that. Screw is removed. Now that I have the screw unscrewed, you're just gonna push on the back of that extractor that removes out towards the front. I'm gonna get a pin to help me push that out. There's your extractor. Now your extractor spring. Now for your extractor spring, I highly recommend using a bench block for this. This is also gonna be removed out from the front. Right, and... All right, and there it pops out. There is a little hole there that you have to push down on the pin as you're, I like to kind of get it started. I did that off camera just because it was a, uh, very difficult to do in frame here, but you can see that little pin right there. So now I'll clean it as necessary and then we'll put it back together. Okay, so now we're gonna reassemble the bolt, uh, just in reverse order. We're gonna do the extractor spring first. It's gonna be a little challenging to get in. Okay, so I found that in, I'm using a brass punch there, one of my kind of uh, junked up ones, and then a really light two ounce hammer. You're not, you won't damage the spring using a light hammer like that. You're not forcing it, you'll know if you're hitting anything you shouldn't. Now for the extractor, it's gonna be challenging because you have to slide that underneath that, that spring. Okay, so this, having a bench block like this really helps a lot. Just kind of force that right in there, slide that back, line up the hole, put the right screw in there. I, don't, I was looking at the right screw and picked up the wrong one. All right, bolt head is fully assembled. Now we'll move to the rest of the bolt. We're gonna do it in reverse order that we just did. 
So firing pin spring over the firing pin. Just slide that in the bolt body. I'm gonna push it down on this bench block just to get it started. I just got the thread barely on there, but it actually, see that didn't even catch. So you're just gonna have to use the wrench right off the bat. You don't really have enough clearance for that caulking piece in there. Luckily, it's pretty easy to get started. Yeah, the, the tool that I made here is about as basic as you can get. I should have put some knurling on it or something. I just didn't. All right, so I went um, pushing. I went actually a little bit too far. I'm going to go back. And right there, you can see you give yourself clearance for that screw to go in there. Sorry, I'm out of focus a little bit. Now I'll put the screw in the back. Using the correct fitting screwdriver bit. And you turn that you turn that clockwise to kind of go up into the what would be the fired or the uh, I guess since it's a clock on close, you really don't have a um, Put it in the open bolt position, I guess we'll call it. You don't really have a cocked position unless you have the trigger installed. Uh, then you'll screw in this bolt face. It's not gonna screw in tight. It's meant to rotate there. So that's in now. I'm gonna now put it back in the rifle, which is super simple. Just line up that bolt face, slide it forward, slide that into the rail, and you are good to go.